Now, for part two, a student is investigating a circuit containing resistor. Now, he is using the circuit in figure 2.1. Resistor X has a resistance of 1 ohm. They are telling you that right now. So, on the figure, draw a voltmeter connected so that it measures the potential difference. Okay. Now, for your voltmeter, we always connect it in parallel to whatever you are trying to measure. So, it will be measured in this way. And now for part B. Okay, let me see. Huh? Um, yes, you guys can draw it at the top, no problem. Doesn't matter how you draw it, you can draw it in this way as well. As long as they are parallel, then it's correct. Okay, then now the student carry out the experiment. He managed to measure the current and the voltage in this way. Need ruler for the wire, um, don't need. If you want it neater, you just use um, ruler. Uh, but they won't minus mark if you didn't use it. Um, so yeah. Now, the student repeats the procedure using resistor Y and Z. And then you got a new table over here for them. So they want you to complete the whole table. How to draw two resistors in parallel in a series? Um, calling your question a bit weird. <laughs> two resistors in parallel in a series. Um, if let's say they want it in parallel, like, your two resistors would just be something like that. Okay. But then if they want it in series, then it would just be something like this. But then, if let's say you got multiples of them track, probably sometimes you can have something like this also. Okay. Okay. Now, if you guys got this type of circuit track, how you interpret the circuit is just like this. The two purple color ones over here, they are in the same branch. So they must be in series with one another. Okay. Then the bottom two over here, they are also in series with one another. But if we are talking about the top branch with the bottom branch, then they are parallel with each other. Okay? So if I label everything like A, B, C, D. So A and B, they are in series. Then C and D, also in series. But then when we talk about A, B and C, D, right? Both of them are in parallel. What other measuring device do we need to know how to draw in a circuit? Um, for a circuit, usually it's just watt meter and amp meter. So yeah, these two should be enough. But if let's say they got give you some additional like, like galvanometer, galvanometer you need to connect it in series as well. But usually we seldom use galvanometer. We just use amp meter and watt meter. So then, um, continuing on to the question, they want us to complete the table over here. So every time, make sure you read all the questions over here. Yeah? Okay, now we need to complete the heading for each single one of them. Resistance is in ohms, current is in ampere, and voltage, it will be in volts. Okay, so we need to fill in the blanks over here by using the readings in the graph. So if we read it carefully, the first one over here is actually given us 0.86. So make sure you guys are reading the scale correctly. Count one by one, count carefully as well. Okay, then for the voltmeter, it is showing us about 0.9 volts. Okay, then we just put it in. So 0.86 and then 0.9. Okay, now another thing about your readings over here, you guys should follow their decimal places. If they give you one decimal here, you also put one decimal. If they give you um, two decimal, you also follow two decimal. So if let's say the reading you get just now was one watt lab, don't just put one in, you need to put 1.0 in six. Okay, so follow their 
significant figure or they are decimal places. Then part C, calculate the power supplied to each of the resistor X, Y, and Z. The formula is given to you. So we just need to calculate and they want us to give the answer in the suitable number of significant figure. Okay, now we just calculate first now. And we multiply the current and the voltage. Um, usually in Paper 6, yes, they will give you formula 1. So if we multiply B, we get 0 0.774. The second one, if we multiply in, we get 0 0.935. And the last one, we get 0 0.576. Now, you guys can see that you all get three significant figures over here. But when you are doing your calculations, right, you only get two significant like that. Now, in your syllabus, the significant figure that they accept is either two or three significant figure. But you need to be consistent. So, so if I put 0 0.774, right, this is three significant figure. I must follow back three significant figure for the rest. How I get 0 0.86 and 0 0.9? Oh, these two values here, I get it from the diagram. Okay, you read from the diagram, then you put it down in the paper. Okay, then, um, does paper 6 require revision from textbook? Um, more or less, you guys will need some information in the different chapters, one, right? yes. But in most of the cases, a lot of the questions that just give you instructions only so you just follow whatever they ask for okay. right 